All right, so I know people watching the week one preview here in the uh, college football YouTube channel think, well, wait a second, what about the backyard brawl? I'm giving the backyard brawl special attention this week because myself, the great Lewis Riddick, are going to be calling that game Thursday night, 7 p.m. Eastern ESPN. And, and Lewis is perfect for this because he experienced the game playing for Pitt. Mm. Lewis, as best as you can, like, we don't know what this rivalry is like. Take us oh. inside the lines of what the backyard brawl is all about. Well, during my time in Pittsburgh, obviously there were two rivalries. There's the one against Pitt. I mean, the one against West Virginia, the one against, and uh, the one against Penn State. You know, Penn State obviously is interstate. It's, you know, they're, I don't know, an hour, two hours away from us. And everyone knows the big history between those two. West Virginia is a little different. You know, it's 70 miles south of Pittsburgh. There's a lot of kids who go to West Virginia who are from the Pittsburgh area. It just seemed always in the four years I was at Pittsburgh to be nastier. It seemed to be more personal in terms of the people at West Virginia, I think, felt as though Pitt thought that they were superior. Many of the recruits who went to West Virginia felt as though Maybe Pitt snubbed them the same way in many ways, Matt, that the people at Pitt sometimes felt as though Penn State felt that they mm. were superior to us. Yeah. So it's kind of like the same thing. It's kind of like that same butting of heads. West Virginia always feels like they have something to prove, just like Pitt feels like it has something to prove to Penn State all the time. And that just breeds a lot of contempt, a lot of healthy sporting contempt. I'm not that's not to say that this could, you know, spill into like personal feelings, but I can <laughs> tell you this. From a sporting standpoint and from a slightly personal standpoint, I have never walked into a stadium as a player. And at the time, 18, 19, 20 years old, like I did in 1989 in Morgantown, and seen grown adults scream at me in the way in which these fans screamed at me and our and, and, and my teammates. Like they were saying some vile, vile things. <laughs> and this was it was a big time game. We were ranked 10th in the country at that time. They were ranked ninth. They had Major Harris, James Jett, uh, Reggie Rembert. They just had weapons all over the place. They had a great team. And we had a bunch of good players, too. We had Kervin Richards, Mark Spindler, uh, Keith Hamilton, um, Alex Van Pelt. We were loaded, too, as a football team. And I'll just tell you, in Morgantown that night, the atmosphere was one where the hair on the back of your net, neck, the hair on your arms would just stand up at just how tense it was and how personal it felt. And on top of that, that, you know, the expectations were high for both teams. I feel like that is kind of what we're setting up for Thursday, especially from Pitt's perspective with how good this team could potentially be. And for West Virginia, they've got themselves a new gunslinger, a quarterback in JT Daniels. And I feel, look, every every fan base feels as though their hopes raise exponentially. Sure. You have a quarterback. Yeah. And look, it's been 11 years. That's, that's one of the big storylines coming. In. It's been a better part of a decade or over a decade since we've seen this game. And so, Lewis, I, I wonder if the country really understands when we kick off 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, understands just how big of a game this is. Because typically, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah. this was always at the end of the year, was it not? Yeah, it was it was near near the end of the year, sometimes smack dab in the middle. I don't know how they really went about determining that. But um, look, for us, Penn State was always the final game before yeah. they went to the Big Ten. That was always the big one. But West Virginia was usually, you know, halfway to three quarters through the year because you knew it was going to be a big game. You knew that probably this was going to have back then Big East ramifications as far as the standings were concerned and maybe even national ramifications. But – for it to kick off the season. Right. That, that, that makes it even better. And I'll tell you why. And you know this. Expectations are so high for both Pitt and West Virginia, right, that we don't even know how good these teams are going to be. So there, there hasn't been any kind of letdown in terms of teams maybe not fulfilling expectations. Like right now, optimism reigns supreme. Yeah. So for both teams, it's right out of the gate. Man, we get to renew this robbery. Pitt's supposed to be a good team. West Virginia has a good quarterback. A bunch of transfers that come in especially in the secondary, some guys on the defense side of the ball. they got big wide receivers returning offensive. There's so many like things that lead both fan bases and both football teams to feel optimistic that I kind of like that it's the first game of the year. I like that it kicks it all off because, like I said, everybody associated with this game for both universities feels as though we should win this game. 
because there is no track record. There is That's no right. track record. That's right. We should win this game. That makes it all the more, all the more special, I believe. And look, and we were talking about it getting ready for the game. You you bring up a great point. When you see the luminaries, they're mm-hmm. going to be on the sideline on Thursday mm-hmm. night, not just from Pittsburgh, but from West Virginia. Mm-hmm. Lewis, you get a really good indication of how much talent has walked <laughs> through this game, yourself included. Yeah, dude, look. Just starting with Pittsburgh. Look, you know, I'll start with West Virginia. I have a lot of respect for how they play and some of the players that they have produced out of there. Okay. I know how good Major Harris was as a quarterback oh, yeah. in, the late, in the late 80s. I know how good James Jett was as a wide receiver because I played with him in, in Oakland, and he was a legit game breaker. I know how good Reggie Rembert was, Eugene Napoleon was, Chris Herring, the linebacker, was. Ronaldo Turnbull was a first-round draft pick as a 3-4, defense, 3-4 outside linebacker defensive end. I know how good these guys were because they look, they gave it to us as well as they took it from us. So for all those guys to maybe be back at this football game in some form or fashion, whether it's live or, you know, at a watch party, whatever it is, that's huge. I have nothing but respect for them on the field. As far as my school, as far as Pitt is concerned, look, yeah. man, I would stack Pitt's all-time team up against any team in the history of college football. Between Marino, Dorsett, Hugh Green, Ricky Jackson, Carlton Williamson, Sal Sinceri, you know, Larry Fitzgerald, mm-hmm. Um, Darrell Reeves, Curtis Martin, on and on and on and on and on and on. These guys are all going to be there. They're all going to be there. These are some <laughs> great players, all pros, Hall of Famers, national championship winners in the case of Dorsett. I mean, these these guys are luminaries. Yeah, they are They are the standard as far as pit football is concerned. And, maybe, and the standard in many respects as far as college football is concerned. It, like I'm getting texts from Hugh Green, man. And I, I all of a sudden, instead of being the 53-year-old guy who now has established his own career, I turn into the little kid again. Right. Isn't that the and beauty of the sport, though? I turn into the little kid who, who remembers meeting Hugh Green in 1979 at Temple when Pitt was playing Temple and me sitting there going up to him with a piece of paper going, and, he, and Hugh at the time is maybe 19. Yeah. He going up going, Mr. Green, can I have your autograph? You know, <laughs> I still laugh at that stuff. It's amazing to me. Isn't that the great part about sports, though, Matt, right? That's it makes it. us feel like children again. We're going to feel like that Thursday night. And that is the great – look, I cannot be, one, any happier to be doing Thursday Night Football with you, but, two, having this be our coming out party for this year because it's the only show in town. College game day is going to be there. And I'll end it with this. I know what West Virginia people are thinking. Oh, Lewis went to Pitt. He's going to be – no, he's a professional. We're going to call go. this game – Right there down the middle and let the final yeah. score dictate who gets talked about most. There is no question about that. I have probably, I've done, I've been racking my brain watching West Virginia tape because I want to do them justice because this team, this team is scary, man. I know. They've got some, they have got some absolute rear end kickers on the defensive line, big, strong wide receivers, new quarterback, and they're ticked off and they always feel disrespected when it comes to Pitt. And Pitt has a lot of expectations, man. So look, I will call it just as we see it, just as I know you will. We'll have a lot of fun doing it. And um, I could not be more thrilled. We lucked out, bro. We got a great game to start it off. I'm just counting down the minutes. Can't wait to bring it to you. 7 p.m. Eastern on ESPN. For Lewis Riddick, I'm Matt Barry. That concludes the week one preview. And what a week one it's going to be in college football. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.